The idea of making just one actor or actress the linchpin of an entire feature-length movie is enough to make most film producers laugh until they throw up. In today's world of superhero-dominated box office smashes, the contemporary blockbuster is stuffed full of more blokes than your mum on a Saturday night, employing bloated casts full of star power to pull in the viewers. And indeed, one-actor shows can be painful viewing when they don't work out. But when it does work, this subgenre of dramatic film can be a uniquely satisfying movie experience, sometimes even enough to redefine an actor his entire career. With that in mind, I'm Will from WhatCulture.com and this is 7 amazing movies that only feature one actor. Now in the interest of transparency, some of the films on this list do technically have more than one actor on the roster. Occasional cameos or supporting voice actors, that kind of thing. But for the most part, it's all on the shoulders of just one man or woman. Number 7. Buried. Buried is not the ideal movie for claustrophobics, but it is, however, a surprisingly tense thrill ride considering the entire thing takes place within a human-sized box. In the opening seconds of the film, you're immediately placed into Ryan Reynolds' headspace, which is basically, oh f why is it so dark and difficult to breathe? Followed by, oh good, I found a light so I can see exactly how f***ed I am inside this tiny wooden box. Ryan Reynolds plays Paul Conroy, an American civilian contractor buried alive in Iraq after his convoy is attacked by Iraqi insurgents. That means Buried has to find a way to ratchet up the tension without ever changing the physical environment, relying solely on Reynolds' facial expressions and brief interactions with the outside world via cell phone. It works because Reynolds reacts pretty much how any normal person would when they're buried alive. Live, which makes it all the more terrifying to sit through. Number 6. 127 Hours Where does the will to survive in the face of seemingly impossible odds come from? That's the question Danny Boyle and James Franco set out to answer in retelling a true story of a mountain climber who finds himself trapped in a Utah canyon. The movie has a couple of flashbacks that feature other actors, but the real driving force of the film is Franco's solo performance of desperation and fear. Unlike most films on this list, director Danny Boyle shows viewers an expansive visual power Palettes, capturing the grandiosity of the canyons. These shots are used to contrast just how isolated and alone our protagonist becomes. And that, more than any panicked dialogue or terrified facial expression, is what makes this movie so damn chilling. Well, that and the fact you have to watch a grown man try to cut his own arm off with a dull knife. Number 5. The Human Voice How do you capture the true essence of a heartbreak? Despite what the good folks on Tumblr might claim, it has little to do with sulking over a bowl of ice cream while watching Love Actually for the third time in one night. No, real heartbreak looks like Ingrid Bergman, frantic to the point of being emotionally crippled, pleading with her lover of the last five years not to marry some other woman the next day. Their love has grown cold and there's simply nothing left but ashes. But that won't stop desperation from oozing out of Bergman's pores in a misguided but painfully realistic last-ditch effort at creating one final spark. Originally written and performed as a one-act stage play in the 1930s, the film was brought to television with Bergman cast as the despairing centerpiece. Amazing! this one-hour, one-sided phone call is able to capture the rose-coloured highlights and the darkest humiliating lows of a relationship that only one person has moved on from. Number 4. Secret Honour Trying to make Richard Nixon into a sympathetic figure is no easy task, but this screenplay, written by Donald Freed and Arnold M. Stone, makes a solid case for it. There's a sense of humility peppered into Nixon's monologues, though not as much into the Tourette's-like cursing and stream-of-consciousness rambling. Philip Baker Hall gives the most nuanced portrayal of Nixon on screen, aside from maybe the Nixon on Futurama, capturing the turmoil of the president as he essentially tells the portraits in his office his entire life story. There's heaps of anger, resentment, sorrow, and even a little bit of repentance in his performance. It's powerful stuff. The way this film is allowed to breathe and naturally crescendo deserves much praise, especially considering the much publicised scandal playing out at its core. Then again, the humanising of such a public shaming is part of what makes Secret Honour such an engaging experience. Number 3. Silent Running. Efficiency is the name of the game in Douglas Turnbull's post-apocalyptic sci-fi film. Bruce Dern stars as an interplanetary greenhouse keeper in charge of growing and nurturing the plant life that's no longer able to inhabit a completely sterile Earth. And he loves it, because he loves the plants as if they were his own children. It's equal parts cute and creepy, like a Labrador who quotes H.P. Lovecraft. When tasked with destroying all the 
greenhouses he's spent so long maintaining, the ecologically minded Dern decides instead to destroy all the other humans on board the space freighter. Dern is passionate about watering his plants, but he's pretty casual when it comes to blowing people the fuck up. These people, by the way, show up for only a moment in what could almost be described as throwaway scenes, because it's clear that Termal can't wait to get beyond the whole murder thing and focus on Dern's isolation, expanding on his relationship with his plants and, because this is a sci-fi flick from the 1970s, his robot helpers, with an unsettling voyeurism that almost makes you feel guilty for being so damn fascinated in it. Number 2. Locke When you think of an entertaining road trip movie, spending an hour and a half with a distraught Tom Hardy trying like hell to get to the hospital does not exactly scream feel-good hit of the summer, but damn it's an engrossing piece of cinematic voyeurism. Because the fraught car ride happens in real time, with Hardy even reacting to real live phone calls being piped into his car, the anxiety is tangible, bouncing around the screen and echoing into a deafening crescendo of tension as the movie progresses. Most Man vs. The Clock stories give the viewer an out, cutting away to another location or subplot so they can take a tiny breather from the tension, but Locke plants its feet early on and refuses to show its hand for the duration of its 85 minute runtime. It's a bold move, but one that pays off thanks to some cunning cinematography, a coyly escalating storyline, and some incredible and understated readings from Hardy. Number 1. All Is Lost all is Lost isn't a documentary, but the raw emotions and Robert Redford's unwavering commitment to making sure this story is told as bleakly as possible sure make it feel like one. This is the story of a man literally battling the sea, and nothing more. There's no convoluted backstory, just one brief flashback that shows us the exact moment Redford's situation took a nosedive. The dedication to simplicity, limiting any insight into this guy's life before it was overtaken by the unforgiving Indian Ocean, adds enough intrigue to make up for any emotional shortcomings. Not that there are many of those. Redford may exude a certain stoicism for most of the picture, but once things start to ramp up, he has a way of letting a light shine through his pragmatism right into his inner dread. His trials on the sea slowly reveal more and more layers of his psyche. This is one survival tale above all others that will stick with you for weeks after the final ambiguous image fades away. And there you have it folks, seven awesome films that feature only one actor. Have you got any one actor showcases that managed to hit that intimate sweet spot for you? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. This is Will for What Culture, and thanks for watching.